Hey, and welcome back to the Java Web App Tutorial series. In the last video, we took a look at how we can take entities from our backend and show those in a data grid in the UI. In this video, I want to continue on that work and add a filtering field that we can use to filter down the results that are shown in the grid. So right now, I'm starting the application here. And let's start it in the browser, just make sure that we're on the same step here. Again, I want to remind you that there is a text version of the tutorial that you can follow along if you miss any of the code. And likewise, you can find the code itself in a GitHub repo. So if you didn't follow along with any of the previous uh, videos and you still want to start from where we are right now, you can download the code for this step and get started right here. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get started. So we're going to start by creating a new text field that we can use for filtering. So right here underneath the grid, let's create a new text field. We're going to call it filter text text. And we're going to initialize this to be a new text field. Then we're going to add it to our layout before the grid. And because this is a vertical layout, that's going to make sure that it actually shows up here on top of it, on top of the grid, like you can see right here. Okay, so what I want to do here is very similar to what I did with the grid. I'm going to create a method where I actually configure this filter. So I'm going to call this configure filter. And I'm going to use IntelliJ to create this method. Just to rearrange it a little bit. And there are a couple of things that we want to configure here. So first of all, we'll take the filter text and we're going to set the placeholder value. So set the placeholder. And this is going to be the text string that shows in the filter when it's empty. So we're going to type in something like filter by name. That way people know what's expected of them. The other thing I want to do is set the clear button visible like this. So if we build this again, you'll see what this actually does. So you can see that we have the placeholder text here. So we know now that we're supposed to filter by name. And if we type in something, we get the clear button visible here, which makes it easy for anyone to clear out the filter when they're done searching. The next thing we want to do is define how the filter input behaves when people are typing into it. By default, text fields and any HTML input essentially won't fire an event until they get blurred or the focus moves out of them. That's not really ideal for a filter. At the same time, going to the other extreme and filtering on every single keystroke all the way to the database is a little excessive. So the mode that we're going to use is called lazy. So if we set the value change mode to lazy, it means that the input field will wait for just a brief moment, a fraction of a second after somebody stops typing, and then trigger a value change. And that's a pretty good experience for what we're trying to accomplish here. The last thing we need to do then is to actually define what should happen when the text changes. So filter text dot add value change listener. And whenever the value changes, we're going to call update list. Now, right now, update list just calls find all every time we call it. So this wouldn't be very helpful, it would always return the entire database. And that's not what we're trying to do at all. So instead, we're going to change this a little bit. And we're going to get the value out of the filter text field and pass it along here. So right now, this, uh, this find all that takes in the search text is not implemented. So let's go ahead and jump into the contact service and implement that. You can see that the find all that we have here. And what I'm just going to do is overload that with one that takes in a string, the filter text. And what I want to do here is essentially look if the filter text is equal to null, or if the filter text is empty, then all we do is return all of them. So essentially, we're just calling find all. But if it's not, then we want to do something else. And that something else is to return uh, a call from the repository. So we're going to use the same comp uh, contact repository, but we're going to create a new method on it called search. We're going to call search, we're going to pass in this uh, filter text. 
And search is not one of the defaults that the JPA repository in Spring Data provides us. Instead, we need to implement this ourselves. So create the method here. And I have a little bit of pre-baked code here. Again, you can find this in the text version. But essentially what we're doing is we are taking in a name parameter, the search term, then we're doing a JPL query where we check if either the first name or the last name matches that search term. We call lower on all of these so that we don't uh, match on case, which would be a little bit uh, too cumbersome for what we're trying to accomplish here. Okay, so let's get back to our main view now. We've passed in the find all, uh, the filter text value to find all, and that's going to pass it all the way back to our database. So if we run this right now, hopefully what we'll see is that we're able to type into the filter here. Let's search your name. Okay, Emily, let's search for Emily. And you can see that as I'm typing, it's filtering down and we're able to find the person that we're looking for. If we clear the filter, we get all of the entities back here. So that's it for this edition of the Java Web App Tutorial. Be sure to check out the next video where we're going to take a look at creating a reusable form element for updating these contacts. Subscribe to the channel and turn on the notifications so that you don't miss any of the videos that we have coming out. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.